I'm working on a personal project and Joel say, oh, what is it, Mauro? I say, Joel, I'm collecting a lot of resources and I'm giving them some names. So I decided to have some activities from A to Z. So which means that uh, today we are going to explore 20, 26 activities from A to Z. And, you know, we are a small group, which is good because we're going to interact. And also uh, my, let's gonna say, our reward today is gonna be that you're gonna, you're gonna have all the activities that I'm gonna share with you are gonna be also for you. And uh, some of them or most of them are gonna be PDF. When I say PDF, that means that uh, you are going to be able to edit and use it to your very own classes. So this is uh, the idea. Uh, what is the methodology that we're going to do today? I'm, I'm gonna explain that. Um, let me see. Uh, okay, let's get started. So I told you before, we're gonna have 26 activities from A to Z. You can use them in your classes later and you can give them another name, but just because I wanted to have this kind of personal project, I decided to give uh, the names from A to Z. Uh, let, let, let's get started with the activities. Okay, first of all, before going on, I wanna share with you because you know, when you design resources, materials, you need to have like a, some background, some philosophy that say, okay, the way Mauro designs resources is this way, he takes into account this and this. So maybe Gustavo has another kind of background. So, but I want to give you a general idea what are the things that I consider when I design resources? So first of all, I think that resources, most of them should be contextualized. So if we are in Lima, please try to use things about your city in Lima. Uh, if I am in Bogota, if I am in Turkey, so try to use some things from your region, from your students' lives as well. Encourage interaction. So always that you design a resource, could be a board game, could be the handout, try to design it by thinking about encouraging interaction among students. Also, offer opportunities to integrate language use. You know, sometimes when you have like 25 grammar exercises, could be like saying, oh, it's only to complete the do and does and did and so on, but uh, you can translate, transform those 25 exercises into like more interactive activity in which you're gonna include also speaking, reading, writing, listening. Uh, also, please make sure that uh, you're going to provide the students with appropriate instructions. Sometimes have, I mean, you can ask one student to help you out and have them to help you to give instructions because sometimes when you see that a student in, are in the middle of the, in, of the activity and they say, teacher, what we are doing, you say, oh, what happened? Maybe it's because we didn't provide proper instructions. Also offer flexibility. That means that uh, you are gonna be more than open to change something that, uh, that you see that uh, they are, aren't working out in this activity. So be flexible to change things, to change pictures. So you have to like, my advice is just to keep a notebook with you and then you're going to like, try to write the things that the students suggest and you are going to change then your resources. And be appealing, you know, for me appealing could be used these kind of colors. I mean, I say, oh, I like to use orange, purple, and this kind of font letters. So appealing means that uh, it's not that uh, we need to follow the same, the same format, the same template. No, it's just organized with the appropriate uh, size of font and so on. So this is basically uh, some tips that I took from Howard and Major 2004. This is an article that I'm gonna share with you as well. So you can have it with you. And this is classic, you know, 20, 2004 is kind of 20 years ago, but it still is a good resource. Let's get started with A. Okay, A, analogies. I want to show you because before COVID, I used to play a lot of games in my classroom. And I say, okay, what I'm gonna do now? I mean, going back to class, classes is gonna take maybe the whole year. So we're, gonna back, we're going back maybe next year, but I need to do something with my games, with my activities. So what I'm doing now is like organizing and trying to transform everything from paper, from boxes, from games into more digital resources. Though that means that I, I'm not going to wait five, six, seven more months to play or to do this activity. So that is why I'm also sharing with you how I'm doing these activities now online. 
class, most of the activities that I'm sharing today, I have been using them with my students. That means that I, that is why I encourage you to use them because they work out. Okay, no, let me see. Number one was analogies. But I, I want to show you. Uh, okay, let's begin with analogies. This is the analogies activity. And okay, here we have, I have the cards and the students are, to, are, are supposed to match them. But now I have this. Okay, you have here, if you want, you know, everything we do in class is supported by theory. You know, if you're going to work on analogies, for sure you are going to find something in a book. Some authors have talked about the benefits of using analogies in our classroom. So just to let you know that everything we do, everything we do in class is supported by theory. This is an example of analogies. Okay, guys, here we have this. Bear is to cup as cat is to. I'm going to have an example. Number one is the example for you, remember. This is I providing instructions. Okay, guys, I say, we are talking about animals. Cup is the baby animal of the bear. What is the baby animal of the cat? So, exactly, yes. So, kitty, kitten. Kitten, kitten. What I'm, yes, Gustavo, what I'm doing now is what we are practicing, vocabulary about animals. So, also, uh, we can practice like, a spelling, I can say, hey guys, how do you spell kitten? K-I-T-T-E-N. So we can explore each analogy in different ways. Number two, sing, oh, I did it, okay. Sing is to sang as eat is to ate. That means that now we are practicing the simple past, you know, the irregular verb. We don't have to say that in, in, to students. Okay, guys, we are going to practice the simple past and regular, no, no, this is, PD, PD is pedagogical discourse that are only among colleagues, you and me, we can talk about simple past, present perfect, this kind of terminology is more for you and for me. But just with the students, we say, okay, guys, look, you have seen is to sung as it is to eight. So here, we also have pictures, pictures, and also uh, you can see that it could be adapted for different levels. So maybe cup and kitten. Oh, okay, another thing is that you see cup is not a common word. So we are doing now is providing students with new vocabulary. Also, some students made the mistakes. Oh, teacher, this is beer. So this is the plate. Please take advantage of that to say, no, guys, it's not beer, it's bear. So we can also preview pronunciation. What else? Analogies can be used to review parts of the, of, the, of, the, of the body, body parts. Finger is to hand, a spiral is to flower. So as you can see here, what I'm going to do is, because remember, always I think that I, you can use one slide for one minute or even for 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Why? Because if I see the hand, I can say, guys, now let's go into review the Parts or oh, the, the name of the the names of the fingers. Uh, this, this, okay, when I'm teaching this thumb, I can say, oh, by the way, guys, that is an expression when you say thumbs up means good. As you can see, look, this analogy can be explored. You can go beyond and explore more things. I mean, flowers. Please tell me. I say, hey guys, tell me three kind of flowers. Maybe they don't know. So we're going to provide new vocabulary. What about the other one? Quarter is to 25 as nickel is to, mm. we're talking about US coins, US coins. Why? Somebody say, oh, teacher, but now, I mean, this is contextualized, but we're talking about also other countries. Yes, why? Because when students, or we are watching a movie or somebody's telling about, okay, guys, hey, do you have a nickel? If a students, don't know what an equal is, here the problem is no like the speed of the speech or oh, because I'm not native, I'm native. No, here the problem with the communication is gonna be the lack of vocabulary. So everything that we or our students learn is good to improve, in this case, listening, because, okay, one cent is one penny, five cents is an equal, 10 cents is a dime, 
and 25 is a quarter, quarter. So in this case, we are also talking about money. And then we can talk about, what about, guys, what is the currency of your countries? I say Colombia is COP, Colombian pesos. So I can ask you, and we can look, explore now numbers, currencies. So we are increasing our general knowledge about other places. Capital letters are to beginning as periods are to end. So we are practicing like punctuation. A spoon is to eat as a straw is to drink. So what I'm going to do is I have more. Example, this one. Cow is to moo as bird is to chirp. Poland is to Europe. Maybe no, no many students know what chat is. So that is why I'm taking advantage of this to, okay, guys, you know, by the way, chat is a country in Africa. So this is also part of our class that our students are gonna say, oh yeah, we are learning, going to learn more things, not only simple present, simple past, doing that, but we are increasing our knowledge through English, through English. What I want to show you now is that, uh, remember, you're gonna have this PowerPoint. If you say, no, I mean, actually I have like 20. You can say, oh, okay, by the way, here, when I'm talking about chat, I forgot that I know I'm also can increase the knowledge of chat, maybe showing the map where chat is located, and also like the map, what is the capital, you know? Oh my goodness, I think we, we don't know the capital. The Nejamena maybe, even, I don't know even the, the, the pronunciation, but uh, this is the way that uh, we can include these uh, 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 activities. Now, uh, as I told you before, is is that easy? If you if you wanna if you want to change this, you can come here and say no. I don't want to use. I wanna have maybe like a Santiago is to. Okay, guys, in Panama, Santiago is the capital of Veraguas, right? Santiago yes, you're is right. Veraguas. Exactly, Santiago is to Veraguas, like what? As David, David is to? Chiriqui. Chiriqui, exactly, Chiriqui. So look, what you can do is contextualize. You can contextualize this, and of course you wanna change the picture, but uh, it's just to let you know, Santiago is to Veraguas and as David is to Chiriqui. What do the students are reviewing or just checking, double checking that they know some cities in Panama, not only Panama is Panama City, but uh, Panama has other provinces, other cities. And here I can say, oh guys, by the way, how many provinces our country have? Hmm, maybe they say, oh, I don't know. So this is a way that uh, we are like using geography in our English classes. So this was activity A with analogies. Remember that, uh, this, this, uh, that I wanna show you how easy, how easy is to change to adapt these resources. Remember, you're gonna have, what is your homework? create a folder, and this folder, you're going to download everything and keep it as original. And from this presentation, you're going to modify. And you can use this activity like as a warm up at the end of the class when you say, oh, everybody's kind of tired. You know what, what I'm gonna do? You say, okay, what I'm going to do is like a, a, an extra activity just at the end of the class at the end of the class, in the middle of the class. Just think about it. Activity number two, B. Letter B is buzzwords. Buzzwords is this activity. I took it from, from this box. And then the floor. Okay. Buzzwords are this, okay, this is the board game. I wanna show you how, what is buzzword. I took the cards and what I'm doing now is adapting this to a PowerPoint presentation. I wanna show you how useful is this activity to promote, to promote vocabulary. This is good, it's perfect to promote vocabulary. Let me show you the presentation is like B. Okay, so this is buzzwords. You can also adapt it. Buzzword is this. Okay, this is the activity. I say, guys, let's go into work with the word paper. All the sentences that are, you are looking at the screen, 
have the word paper. Let's go into give it a try. Let's give it a shot. Okay. Number one, wipe up the kitchen spills with this. Paper what? What wipe up? Exactly. So paper towel. Oh, number two, pages with events, info, and comics. Pages with events, comics, newspaper. Newspaper. Yes. Thank you, Richard. Not a co no, not a hard cover book. It's not hard. Co no, it's not hard cover. Uh, let me show you. This is hardcover, hardcover, it's hard. It's no hardcover, it's like something like that. No hardcover. It is paperback. So when you go to amazon.com, they're gonna ask you, hey, do you want to buy the hardcover book or paperback? Paperback, of course, is cheaper than hardcover book. What about the oh, well, Okay, holds papers together paper clip. And the last one, disposable picnic dishes. What is that? When you go to a picnic, you say, hey, please, who's bringing the paper? Paper plates. So look, how useful could be this activity as a warm up? And then what we can do? OK, guys, please, since we need to provide questioning in our classes. What we're going to do is in class, I mean, when I talk about in classes, I'm talking about online, remote, face-to-face -face soon, hopefully. I say, guys, please, everybody's going to ask a question using those words, okay? Something like, hey, Joel, do you have paper towers in your kitchen? Maybe, yes, I do, no, I don't. Hey, how often do you read the newspaper? If we have more advanced students and we are learning, practicing the present perfect, present perfect, okay, have you ever read the newspaper, a newspaper in English? Have you ever bought a paper bag? So you can see this activity can be adapted to several levels. And now, since we still, I mean, look, you can say, oh yeah, I like it, but I need to see images, color. What I do is this. Paper towel, newspaper, paper clip, paper bag, paper plates. As you can see, with those pictures, we are also fostering, fostering like enhancing our student vocabulary. And I have more examples. Movie, you see a film here. Movie, theater. Okay, what about the next number two? Film created to scare audiences. What is number two? Scary movies. Oh yeah, scary movies or horror movies. Yeah, right, thank you. What about this one? It was a 2007 movie about buzzing. Zzz, animal that. What is that? What movie was that? Long time ago. What is that movie? Exactly, thank you, yeah. B movie, thank you. B movie, yes, yes, I'm, yeah. B movie. Now you might, you must buy this to see the show. If you're going to the cinema, movie theater, you need a movie. Check. Or movie ticket, ticket, yes. Okay. Now, advance. It's an advance that you look at a future film. I mean, there is a movie that is. Re will be released in 2023, 2023, 22. So you're gonna look at the movie preview. This is the movie preview. The like in Spanish, you will say sometimes los cortos. This is like movie preview. Now here I have the I have the the, the, the pictures: movie theater, horror movie, B movie, movie ticket, movie preview. As I told you before, you can use this slide to have a students write sentences. Oh yeah. What about speaking about any, any, uh, any, I mean, any kind of exercise you can do with this? One more, man, a stack of three bowls of frozen white stuff. What is that? A stack of 
three bowls of frozen white stuff for Christmas in the US in the north, in Europe as well, maybe. It is? Snowman. The snowman, thank you, Bricia. yes. Superhero whose enemies are Joker and Catwoman. Batman. Batman. Performs dangerous acts in movies. Maybe this is a new word for many of our students. Even for us, it's new. Performs, you know, this is a person when there is a movie and that, Stuntman. that person. Stuntman, yes. Cartoon hero knows a demand of steel. Iron Man. Ariamano, Superman. <laughs> yes. A prehistoric person. Prehistoric person. He's a caveman. So I have more, more, exerci more, more examples, but uh, this is an example of what this is the this is the game. As you can see, I mean, it's not that I, I'm inventing, I'm creating all the sentences. No, I also we also need some help. But uh, what, what is our effort? What we are making the effort of transforming this card that I used to play with my students in classroom, in the classroom. Now I have this, but I, even it's better now. What is better could be more interactive as well as is like more pictures. But here I, I can't use the pictures. So that is why. Uh, again, I want to show you. You're, you're going to have this PowerPoint. What is your job? change the sentences because you can say oh you know my level is kind of basic i think i will describe paper tower like it's gonna say simpler easier right so this is it. activity number two is buzzword please don't hesitate to ask anything you want to ask now uh, while i'm changing the activity looking for the other one you can just uh, tell us or something express something that you want to say uh, we are going now with activity C. Okay, activity C is called categories. You know, categories is like, is this an example? When I have, I can have my class and say, guys, remember, we are, I mean, we are supposed to also assign roles to our students. We don't have to do everything in class because our voices, you know, we are tired, many things that are, uh, can affect the class. So what I'm going to do is assign some of you in class because you are my group of students and I have been with you for a month, for two months. So I already know who you are. That means that I can say, okay, Gustavo, I know your names and everything. I can say, hey, Joel, so please, one of you is going to be in charge of reading the words. While wow, I'm just, uh, I'm gonna be like, uh, I mean, I'm going to have control of the activity, but that doesn't mean that I have to read everything. I have to do everything. So please assign this activity to one student, two students, for sure you're gonna find a volunteer who is going to read the words. So example, I can say, Gustavo, can you please read the words that you see on the screen? Uh, yeah, uh, swordfish, eel, squid, sea otter, and walrus. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Gustavo. Now, what Gustavo is going to say, Gustavo, if Gustavo knows the category, Gustavo says, oh, teacher, the category is this and this. If Gustavo doesn't know it, Gustavo is going to ask one of his classmates, because also Gustavo knows his classmates for a month, for two months, for like, sometimes for six months. So what Gustavo is going to do is say, Okay, teacher, I don't know, but I'm going to ask uh, Brigida. You know, it's an example, right? So Gustavo, tell us, what, what is this category? So those are fishes. Yeah, yeah, those are fishes. As eel is an anguilla, as were fishes. Yes. Gustavo, and do you know the meaning of all of them? And uh, Walrus and sea otter. Yeah, I, I know what is a sea otter. And what yes. and speed could be that the, 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 the uh, both words I I I I don't know how what 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 is the meaning of them exactly. <laughs> okay, that's okay. Okay, so you say yeah, sea animal. Yeah, we we, we have swordfish, eel, squid, sea otter, and like nutria and water. So this is the activity that we're going to do. But now I'm going to show you how we are doing this activity 
in our classes with more categories. Look, this is the category, category C. Okay, here we have this. Uh, okay, this activity can also be done with a handout, right? With a handout. So in case you say, oh, okay, oh, Mauro, I have some students who they don't have internet. So I, you can also create this handout for your students in case you need to create the learning guides. So this is the example, see? Now we have, I wanna share with you a uh, website. The website is called learningapps.com. No, let me see. Learning apps. I want to share with you this on on the on chat on the chat because let me see. Let me show you how you can go beyond this activity and create activities related to that category one. Look, for example, the one that just uh, Gustavo read. You can also have your students complete a more interactive activity with those categories using this app, learningapps.org. Guys, this is a free, free app. This is a free app. As you can see, we have the same words that we use in our previous activity. What students have to do is they have to match. Example, they say a squid, this is a squid, jellyfish, sea otter, walrus, and then they have to check and say yes or not. The ones, the ones in red are they they they, they are bad. They are incorrect. Here, guys, I want to show you how easy it is to use this. You're going to register, identificarse, and then you are going to create your apps with learning apps. What is good about it? That you are going to personalize, contextualize your activities because you are going to use your own pictures. So that is why I invite you to explore learningapps.org. I have more examples about this app. Let me show them. Okay, another category. This one, welder, retail clerk, telemarketer, garment worker, florist, what is that? What is this category? That's like supermarkets. Okay, oh yeah, or oh, jobs. Let's gonna say jobs, right? Okay. So here, here, what we're going to do, I'm gonna show you another, ex ex another exercise or activity that uh, you can do with learning apps. Look, this is another, the same activity that I did with categories that uh, you're going to create with learning apps. Look what you're going to do. You can design, it's so easy, so easy. Now, because we don't have enough time to do so, but uh, here I can say, okay, I click here and let me see, florist. So pyramid, I don't know what's pyramid, okay, florist. So I'm going to move florist to the, let me see, to the category, Jasmine. Jasmine is here, florist is job. Marigold, flowers, blush, makeup, Cylinder, shapes, uh, daisy, flower. So you can have your students to group those categories after seeing them in class. So here I summarize the categories and say, okay guys, I can send this, I can send this link. So I send the link to students in class. I send the link, I send the link. You, if we are having synchronous classes, what we can do, this is my advice. Please find a student who can share the screen and that student is going to lead the activity. I'm not going to do everything, remember. So if, if, if you find a student, Samuel, for example, Santiago is going to share the screen, Santiago is going to lead the activity and his classmates are going to tell, hey, Santi, Jobs, or oh, oh, Ponsetia is a flower. Uh, Etc. Retail clerk is a job. So this is another activity that you can create with learning apps. And remember, they are free. It is free. Here we have more activities. Look, we have like, remember, I already told you that I created the activity for this. Makeup, the shapes or geometric solids. And I what I did was to take this into learningapps.org. Now, oh, this is the activity that I already showed you. Now, I have this another, another 
activity that you can create. Okay, this is the category. Pasto, Tunja, Pereira, Armenia, Valle du Par. What are they? Pasto, Tunja, Armenia, Valle du Par. What are they? Places. They are places in? Colombia. Exactly. Colombian cities. Oh, yes, teacher. Now, I can ask students, hey, guys, have you ever been to? Have you ever been to Pereira? Oh, yes. Did you go to Pereira last year? So I'm using simple present, simple past, everything that we can teach in our classes. Now, with this activity, with learning apps, look, guys, look, the activity that I created with learning apps. This is the activity. I just want to promote learning apps. Here, students are gonna have the cities in Colombia and they click here, they say, oh goodness, this is Armenia, Bogota, Cartagena, Medellin, Pasto. Oh, this is Tunja. Okay, what about this? This is, no, I mean, this is Valle du Par. So you click on the picture and you're gonna give me the name of the picture. What is the place? This is Pereira, uh, this is Armenia. Pasto in the south of Colombia, Cartagena, Bogota. Let's make a mistake. This is Kipdo, but I was gonna say that this is Medellin. When we made a mistake and you click, look, the ones in pink, the ones in pink means that you made a mistake. Just to show you, guys, remember, you can create this activity with learning apps. It's so easy. Uh, now, another one is, let me show you this one is, uh, Okay, another one is Hanso screwdriver level plier state measure. This, these are tools. And you can create a hangman also with learning apps. I wanna show you what, what is it. So you go there, this is the tool that uh, you can create with learning apps, is tools. The same tools, the same ones that I use for my previous activity is, are the ones that uh, you're going to create this. Guys, if, if you go to learning apps, create, create application, create application apps, you go here and you wanna find the variety of things that you can do. You can say matching pairs, uh, close text, or the one that is called guess the word. Guess the word is the one that we just explored. So what I'm doing is telling you that, okay, if you go online, you're gonna find tons, a whole bunch of activities with hang -wang, with pictures but they don't have the same vocabulary that uh, you want to use in your classes. Remember, the one I told you about Pasto, Pereira, Tunja, Bogota, Medellin, you are not going to find that specific activity online. So that, what I'm telling you is that if you want to have the class, activities, games, with the same, with the same vocabulary you are promoting in class, use learningapps.org. So far, so good, why? because so far it is free. They are not charging any money. So please bear in mind and use it because they don't charge any kind of money. This is an example. Okay, now here we have more categories. You know, also we have categories for little kids. You know, you can have this, Family Guy, Clues, uh, Toy Story 4. We can have princesses. We can have like uh, shapes. So as you can see, we can adapt the categories not only for adults, for teens, also for little kids, even, even for pre-K pre, pre or uh, elementary school kids. They love movies. They love Disney characters. So that is why I am incorporating those kind of uh, kids love sea animals. So octopus, dolphin, dolphin, whales, and so on. Also candy bars. Okay, these are some candy bars, right? This is the, the oh, and also superheroes because you know our kids, they love kind of this kind of topics in our class, in their classes. And also these are some cats. Okay, this is activity, uh, this is activity uh, C. Activity C, and now uh, let's go on with activity letter D. Okay, remember, this is letter D. Okay, we have dancing with balloons. What is that? What is dancing with balloons? Actually, I did it in my classes before. Why? Because I, I have some balloons. Yes, I have some balloons. Each balloon has a question. So students start dancing. They dance something, they, the music, they, I mean, adapted to their ages and so on. 
And when the music stopped, when the music stopped, you know what happened? They have to catch a ball, one ball. And for example, uh, let's say that Gustavo ca caught the blue balloon. Gustavo has to answer the question that I was attached to the balloon, right? So I say, hey, Gustavo, tell me if I see animals. It's okay. Now, the other student, like Brigida, caught like the green balloon. So Brigida is going to tell, hey, how old are you? I mean, I, there are some examples, but uh, this is the idea. So, and then you can start again the music and students start dancing for 30 seconds, no more than a minute. And when the music stopped, stops, yeah, what we're going to do is everybody with the balloon is going to do this and this and this with questions, with movements. Imagine anything you want to practice in your class. It could be like a warm up activity or when we need more movement in, our, in your classes, it's a good activity for that, dancing with balloons. Now, I want to show you what I'm doing now in, in my classes. Uh, please, Joel, are you there? Of course, Joel, right? Yes, I'm here. Joel, I need your help, right? Me. <laughs> okay, Joel, Joel, turn the camera on. Because, I mean, with Dancing with Balloons, we're going to do some activity. Joel, this is number one. Joel, please stand up. <laughs> How many star jumps can you do in 30 seconds? Joel, start now. Joel. Yeah. <laughs> oh, five or this is an example, oh, Joel. Don't worry. Oh, oh, five or six. <laughs> okay, yeah. But uh, please, if you have a special kid, you know, because when you are adult, you don't want to do this. But uh, Joel, so in this case, I work out in the morning. I work out in the morning. <laughs> so this is the time we can say, oh, okay, Joel, you you like you completed uh, ten star jumps. Okay, yes, you're gonna have this slide, so you can use it in your classes. I have another example. We're going, to, we're going to play some music, and I say, okay, okay, guys, show me your favorite dance moves. So we can play any song, and the students are going to dance, and they're going to show the, the, I mean, especially with elementary school, kids is going to work a lot. When you are 16, 17 years old, oh, teacher, what's going on with you? I don't want to dance in front of the camera. But please, if you have kids, do this with the kids. Another one. Joy, tell me a number from one to eight. Six. The activity is called shake it out. So Joel, shake your body. <laughs> Another number. Two. Shake your left leg. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's an example, yes. Okay, yeah, this is a, all, of, all of the these numbers of the word check. If you want to change it, say, oh, teacher, I want to have check your head. You can change, I mean, you can adapt it, right? Now, another one, uh, we are going to, we have some music and the students are going to dance. And when the music is stopped, the students have to be like a statue, something like that. Okay, for example, uh, let me see. So the students like dance and when the music is up, they are going to, it's like something like that, right? It could be fun for kids, I told you before. And okay, now I want to show you one that I, I'm really adapting. And what is that? Uh, speaking of music. Okay, I have three exercises, three, I have three exercises that I do with music. Let me show you number one. Number one is for little kids. This is for kids, little kids. I, I, I have one for little kids and also another for adults. Okay, um, it's similar. It's similar to the dance with the balloon, but here we are in class. In at home, it's not that easy to have this activity. Now, look, I have. This is for little kids. Imagine just a class with little kids. Okay, kids, we are going to do this. We are going to play a song. When the song is playing, you have to dance or do something from the song. For example, here. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm, he had a pig, E-I-E-I-O. 
with an oink oink here and an oink this oink there. Here an oink, there an oink, everywhere an oink oink. Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. The song is stop, and now you're gonna say, Okay, please, guys, uh, tell me five farm animals. And we can go with more songs. Look, we have the famous baby shark. And when the song is stop, please tell me five family members. Now, another song. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy. After 30 seconds or 45 seconds, this, this song is going to stop. Now, another one. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. And this has to do with parts of the body. So now, I'm going to show you another one. This is more like, more Latin, more like a tropical. Okay, guys, even we are in English class, if we have a students and we have to have like a break, let's going to do it with music. Now, Joel, you want to help me with this or not? <laughs> Joel, sure, I can help you. Joel, okay, you are one of my students, and I know that this, this activity is going to work out with the class. Joel, what you have to do is. Oh, yeah, ya, ya me está gustando más de lo normal. Todo mi sentido van pidiendo más. So, Joel, with this music, you have to dance. I mean, students have to dance, and after that, they have to stop when the song stops. <laughs> Oh yeah, ya, ya me está gustando más de lo normal. Todo mi sentido van pidiendo más. Esto hay que tomarlo sin ningún apuro. Despacito, quiero respirar tu cuello despacito. So the music starts and then it's like, show me the movement. Are you listening? No. Yes, yes. Okay, Joel. No, and now we can say, okay, Joel, please let's talk about this picture. Okay, what can you see in the picture? All right, a lot of people. Exactly. It's so like a classroom? Have... Is that like a school? You have 30 seconds to say, okay. Yes, it's a school, there is a teacher, a lot of students, there are, there, there are numbers written on the board. Um, you know, the, I think that they, they are going, they are having fun because they have, there is a student with the ball. Uh, the one student is chewing a gum, right? A gum. And what else here? No, oh, no. Okay. What we can do, we can, we, we're going to do this exercise because now we can. When the music stops, we go on. Okay. This is an activity that I think, how can you do it in your classes? Because sometimes in our classes, we need rhythm, we need, we need music. Okay. And there are more music, more songs. Okay. Now, the songs are not going to last two minutes. It's going to be boring for the class. No, I already edited, edit, edit them. Edited and just cut the song only 30, 20, 45 seconds, right? So just to let you know, all the songs are really short. You can add dance, merengue. Okay, this is another way that uh, you can have this activity in your classes, like to make maybe more fun if you want. But uh, remember, it, it, it also depends on your, the kind of students you have, because sometimes with teenagers, they don't want to dance. You know that. They don't want to dance. And also you say, oh, you know, Mauro, but uh, my class is in English. I want music in English. So what are you going to do is uh, I have some songs in English as well. This is an example. This is I did it. I did it with with my with my course three, three course three class this day. Music in English. I wonder how, I wonder why, yesterday you told me about the blue... And so on. Okay, hey, what's your favorite shopping center in Panama City, in Medellin? And? Or in Lebanon, we have people from Lebanon here. In Lebanon. Uh, Peru. 
Uncharted when did you go to do Weekends? Okay, this is an example that I... YMCA. Okay, in my classes, guys, when I did this activity, think about it. Get a ball. Get a ball. And your students are going to pass the ball. And when the music stops, the student with the ball is the one who is going to answer the question. It's so much fun in your classes. It's, it's one activity that I did in my classes, so I'm, I'm planning to do again. Okay, so this was the activity with letter, letter D. This was the activity with letter D. Let's go on with activity with letter E. Okay, the E activity is called emoji. This is an activity that uh, is really attached, linked to our students in our everyday lives. I mean, tell me who uses emojis every day? Everybody, I guess. A lot of people use emoji. That is why I want to share this mini lesson about emojis, emoji that uh, you can use in your classes for a whole hour, two hours, one class, one or oh, even a week. First of all, you're gonna talk about what is the background about emoji, where that emoji come from, what is the word, it's a Japanese word that means picture writing. So you can spend some time here asking students about the words, what is emoji. Then if you have an advanced level in which students can communicate, let's gonna talk about more identities, social cultural differences with emoji. So you can go beyond and talk about it. And now, I can say, okay, you know, guys, I found uh, interesting research, and they say that this emoji is the, the one that is more used among women, among men. I mean, some research that we can explore and discuss in our classes. And now, in class, what I can do is I can have a students tell me what is this emoji. Example, what is number one in English? So, a slightly smiling. The second one is, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Joel, I need your help again. I am here. Joel, please, you're gonna be in charge of showing in your, in your camera, represent emoji number one, represent it. Like a slightly smiling. <laughs> Joel, next. Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, Joel, number three, get angry. Number four. <laughs> yeah, so even guys, what we can hear, we can have is a like competition. Let's suppose that uh, Joel and Sarah are the ones who are going to represent it. In our class, we can select, we can say which one, Joel or Sarah, did a, be, a, a better job uh, representing the emojis. So this is an example of emojis. You can have a students guess, and then, okay, more more emojis, zany, uh, pensive, or like speechless, lying, oh, now say it, not, not, okay, drooling. So this is the way that you can share with the students. Maybe they don't know all the emojis that they are looking at now, and then, then what you're going to do is a memory game. This memory game, your students are going to tell two numbers. Please, you're gonna use this memory game. Here, number, you're gonna find, you need to find what is the meaning of the emoji. Emoji, emoji is memory game, memory game. Here, I want to show you how you can adapt or how can you like, use this activity and change it. Look, you have here the board, the memory board. Go here, move it, move this, and just change the picture. You can say, cambiar, change image, and you can change it and adapt it to your classes. Use this memory game, not only for emojis, you can use this memory game for another kind of vocabulary. You can say, oh, I want to use it with fruits. I want to use it with vegetables and so on, right? So here, so this memory game is also a good activity that uh, you can use, I told you before, not only for 
uh, emojis. Oh, by the way, I have, I have this emoji website that I do recommend. So what is this emoji activity? Please. This is a wonderful website. What is this all about? What you can do is, okay, this is an emoji prompt. We can start creating a story. I can say, I'm gonna start. Oh, yesterday I ate a uh, yummy ice cream. Then another student continued the story and say, oh, and also I ate Japanese food. And then, and then, oh, you know, I happened to uh, walk along the street and I saw a bride that I was approaching the church. And then, my goodness, I saw a pig and something. Okay, so, so with this website, you can create stories and stories. You can start over and you say, then, 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 then. Also, you can promote writing. How? Your students can say, okay, guys, I'm gonna show you seven, eight emoji. Everybody in 20 minutes, in 15 minutes, are going to create a story using those emoji. As you can see, you can use this emoji website for many, many, many things. Speaking, writing, uh, asking questions. So many things that I, you can do it. You can do with that. The, I, I already sent you, I sent you the, the link with the emoji link. So you can please check it and use it in your classes. Now, uh, let me show you. Uh, okay, we are in letter, we are in letter uh, E. Uh, let's go, let's move on with letter F and then with letter G. Okay, letter G is this activity that I, I'm going to show you right now. Okay, now. Letter, uh, letter F, what is F? Okay, this, remember, this was emoji, E. Now, letter F. Letter F is figure it out. Figure it out is an activity that I use with ribas. What are ribas? Okay, this is the example of ribas. This is the example you have. Secret, secret, secret. Which one is the finger pointing out? Is pointing out the top. So a ribas is like a give a sentence of a phrase based on a picture. I want to show you the examples to let you know how can you use it. This is the example. Okay, Arribas is a picture of a picture. Let me see. You're watching. Now. A picture letter number of symbol used to represent a word or phrase that is similar in pronunciation. For example, top secret. What about this one? What is five Qs and five Qs? Remember, you have to translate something that is similar in pronunciation. Five Qs and five Qs is? Thank you. This is Rivas. I mean, it's kind of challenging, but it's worth it. Now, what is this picture? What is the meaning of this picture, please? This is an eye. An eye is below or understand. So what is the meaning of that? I, I understand, you know, look, I understand. You know, rebuts are challenging, but uh, please, you can try to help the students to figure, figure them out. What about this one? I am in you as small. Gustavo, what do you think, or you guys, Rita? Mm. What is this? I am, let's do it comparisons. I am. I am bigger than you. I am bigger than you. What about this? What about this one? What about this one? Zip one. Zip. Yes, <laughs> zip code. And here I can use zip code to help students understand what is a zip code is. What about this one? Here, as you can see, a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T. There is no U in the alphabet. There is no U. So there is no U. 
When there is not you, you say, missing you, missing you. Okay, guys, if you haven't seen Rebos before, that's okay, but uh, there are lots of online, online Rebos that uh, you can select the ones that uh, you can use in your classes, and it's good as a warm up as well. Example, what is this? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. What happened with Friday? What color is it? What color? Black Friday. Exactly. Black. Black Friday, we can explain more about Black Friday. Okay, this is a secret just, just between you and me, just between you and me. Trip, look at the trip. Trip around, around the water. Don't worry, I mean, if you don't know the meaning right now, but uh, it's just an idea of, excuse me. Okay, this is Rebus. Remember, it was with letter F. Oh, here you can use, like, in this one, you are teaching excuse me. Say, oh, guys, by the way, you say, excuse me, excuse him, excuse him. So you can use this activity also to review object pronouns in case you want to use it for that. Okay, this was the activity with a, this was the activity about figure it out. I Remember, I'm sending you this, and if you want to, if you want to use more or look for more, just go online, and you're going to find the activity that is called Rebus. Rebus. Now, with letter G, with letter G, I have this game that is guesstimation. Guesstimation. What is guesstimation? Guesstimation is a game that it, it was found here. As you can see, there are many, many cards but I don't use them, a lot of them, because they are more US culture, US music that I don't know much about it. So what I do is adapt it. Believe it or not, we are going to use Word from Office. I mean, yeah, this is Word. So you don't have to pay for this. This is free because it's the word that, I, word that we use every day. Here, I created this chart and there is something that is called developer. It's a function from Word. It's called developer. With developer, you can create this amazing game. Why amazing? Because look, I have here, the questions here are kind of tough, difficult. But this is the idea, because the students are going to practice this with numbers. I say, hey, guys, how many windows does the Statue of Liberty crown have? So students want to say, oh, teacher, 20. Here are 12 and here 25. So then what I'm going to do is check, I'm going to check the answer and the answer is 25 windows. I have more questions. Uh, when did Gabriel Garcia Marquez die? So students have to say the year, uh, 1999. 2014. As you can see, we are practicing a lot of numbers. And then we see the answer, and the answer is 2014. I have more questions, like what is the percentage of oxygen in the air? Uh, how many autonomous regions does Spain have? Uh, what is the altitude in Lima? What I'm doing with this activity is doing a good practice of numbers, because you know we have to practice numbers every day, but it's not counting from one to 10. No, it's just practicing with real examples, with good questions. And then the complement for guesstimation is this PowerPoint. With this PowerPoint, I'm doing the same, and the students are going to think about the questions that we already review. Example, the Statue of Liberty. How many windows does the Statue of Liberty have? When did Gabriel Garcia Marquez die? So remember, everything that I'm saying now is supposed to be said by students. They have to create and remind the questions they already, they already uh, look at. So the game, as I told you before, is called guesstimation. Guesstimation, remember it's a game that is taken from here, guesstimation. Right? This is guesstimation. Now, I have another activity that is with letter H. Let me see, uh, letter H. Okay, letter H is here. This was the figure it out activity. And then, no, 
Let me, it's not a present tense. Let me see what is it. Uh, this one, yes. Uh, remember, the activity was with F, figure it out. Now uh, we have, this is guesstimation, remember, with G. Also, we have things about Mickey Mouse, the, the, I mean, the Paramount logo pictures, and so on. You can look for questions that are, I mean, whose answer is not that easy. You can, you can, you can say, hey, how many provinces does Panama have? Maybe may, many of your students know. But let's look for questions that are, are more challenging. Now, hidden colors with H. Hidden colors, as you can see, these sentences make sense. They don't have, I mean, oh, they don't have grammar mistakes. Supposedly, they don't have grammar mistakes. As students, what they have to do is, really, okay, hey, teacher, some parts of the face are the eye, eyebrow, nose, and mouth. There, in each sentence, there is a hidden color. Teacher, what do you mean? Okay, as you can see, the hidden color in number one is brown. Brown. Next, I'm not really dumb. Lack of sleep made me forget the answers. What is the color in number two? What is the hidden color? Black. Yes, and so on, yeah. So as you can see, you can have a student read the sentences and also check the meaning. They know the meaning of the sentence. I have hidden colors. I also have, okay, and then I can complement the activity with the colors that they already found. Now, hidden animals. Close the door at once. What is animal number one? Close the door at once. Close the door at once. The cat. Oh, the cat. let me see that. Right, it, it's R A T. Right. What about name number two? Oh, that, right. will, yes. that will be a real help. What is number two? Dog. Beginning with. No, beginning with B. B. Bear. Bear, yeah, exactly. With number three in the desert, Sahara Desert. Camel. Camel, so look, here is the, I mean, the animal is in, inside the sentence. Here we have like, and then I can say, guys, these are the animals that you found. Always go beyond, go beyond the slide. And here, what we can do, okay. We can do if we are working with, we can work with the spelling of the alpha and the, of the of the animals. How do you spell horse? How do you spell deer? Make the noise of that animal. Many things you can do with animals. Or you can say, guys, look, I'm going to describe an animal. Let me know what is the number. Okay, guys, this animal usually or they live in Australia. Uh, they are kind of oh, teacher number fifteen, koala. So you can have also a speaking activity. Now, let's gonna talk about Panama. I created those sentences and we're going to find cities in Panama. Number one, my cousin Mario laughed during the whole movie. What is the city from Panama that you can find there? My cousin Mario laughed during the whole movie. Nobody begins with O. Remember, here we don't have the accents. We don't have the accents, the, the tildes, the accents. What about number two, a port? Yeah, the protocol of, on biosafety was signed in 2003 on the Atlantic Ocean, on the Caribbean Sea. Number two, Caribbean Sea, many, many people go there to buy things, it's a port. Number two, Begin Cologne, yeah, here, look, Cologne is here, Cologne. So you can adapt this activity also for your own country. Uh, here is a, do you want ice cream or tiramisu cake? Oh, gotcha means, I, okay, I wanna show you the answers. You can explore them later. Hola, Cologne, more things on the Atlantic, Cham Chami, Chami, Nata, Oku. So there are cities that maybe many people don't know, but they are part of Panama. Because 
when you create this sentence, it's not that easy to say, oh, teacher, I want to use Chiriki. Oh, you have to think about creating a, a sentence using Chiriki in the middle. It's, not, it's challenging, but uh, you never know that it could be possible. And then what we can do is explore more about that. Okay, guys, have you ever been to Cologne? Have you ever been to Nat Nata? Who is from Oku? Chame? So we are contextualizing this activity from colors, from animals, and now to our very own country, Panama. Uh, idioms. In idioms, I'm sharing with you the importance. I want to highlight that we are expected to teach idioms. Idioms are really, really important. It doesn't matter if our students are in basic level. No, no, no. That is one situation that we have to think about it. Why? Because we just teach idioms when students are in super advanced levels. No, even if we are in class number one, provide students with examples. Guys, we have an exam tomorrow. He said it's gonna be easy. I say, yeah, please say, it's gonna be a piece of cake. So in that way, students are facing, handling this challenge topic from early, early, uh, levels. This is a PowerPoint that I have for you. And if you want to give a lesson about idioms, in this PowerPoint, there are 25 idioms that we're going to learn today in our class. So we can say, guys, what is the meaning of this and this and this? And also, and then what you, we're going to do is have a video. I want to show you this video. This video includes those 25 idioms that we are learning today. Please take two minutes to watch the video. I asked my parents for an iPad and they said no way. It's too expensive, so I asked how much I'd have to pay. They said an arm and a leg and I was pretty bummed. That is until I learned that that was just an idiom. An idiom is a phrase that doesn't make much sense unless you heard it before and you knew what it meant. The words themselves could be used in a different way than what the person means when they use the phrase. Saying you missed the phone, that's an idiom. What does that really mean? That they lost their shoes and their feet will freeze. These are cold feet of a different kind. It means that they got nervous and they changed their mind. If we're in the same boat, we don't have to be at sea. It just means you're in the same situation as me. It's raining cats and dogs is something one might say. But all it really means is that there's lots of rain. That's a piece of cake. That's an idiom. I'm drawing a play. That's an idiom. Cats out of the bed. That's an idiom. We're gonna have a blast. That's an idiom. So, why would someone use an idiom? Well, idioms make what you say or write sound more interesting. Do you mean? Instead of saying, I'm excited, I could say, I'm over the moon. And that sounds more interesting, right? Exactly. You hit the nail on the head. Let's play it by ear. That's an idiom. Crocodile tear. That's an idiom. It came out of the blue. That's an idiom. Happy cake and eat it too. That's an idiom. Barking up the wrong tree. That's an idiom. By the skin of your teeth. We gotta break the ice That's an idiom Got bigger fish to fry That's an idiom Okay, so yes, I'm sharing Sure, I'm sharing the link And, but remember uh, 
let me share it with you. I, I... So, you took my master class and learned to make egg toast really good. Delicious. That's cool. But can you learn to make egg toast really good while singing perfectly on key? And then, can you learn to take a beat to find your... Okay, now, this is a video that, I remember, you're going you're gonna to play in your class after checking, after checking the meaning of those, uh, of those idioms. I'm sharing with you also this Gloucester. I collected a lot of resources about idioms that you can explore in this Gloucester. So I also send you the link that I'm gonna share with you also later. Uh, this is a, a collection of idioms. When it comes to the, to the video that yeah, we, was, we, we watched before, remember, before the video, you are expected to explore more things about idioms before watching the video. So the video is gonna be the last part of your class. And you're gonna see the importance of idioms and how your students are gonna use them. You can say, okay, guys, now, what is our task? Everybody in pairs, in groups, you are going to create you are going to create a dialogue. The, the dialogue, and you are expected to include three idioms in your one minute dialogue. So it's an example of what you can do with this idiom uh, activity. I do recommend not only the video, but also the lesson so that you can use it in your classes. And as I, I, as I told you, please encourage the students to use idioms because our students complain and they say, oh, you know, uh, when I speak or when I watch movies, I don't understand many things. You know why? Because most of the times there are, the problem is the idioms they use in movies, they use in these kind of uh, things. So uh, <clears throat> let's go on. Okay, this is I. I want to show you I J. Let's see what is J. J is an activity that I called Jolly Gingerbread Man. Jolly Gingerbread Man, why I call it? Because here I'm going to use find like, okay, in this Jolly Gingerbread Man, students are going to find the differences between this gingerbread man. So you say, oh, you know, one is a smiling teacher, the other one is frowning, and one has like a baby, the other one doesn't, and so on. So this is why here in J, what we're going to do with letter J is to please promote, foster exercises like the Jolly a Gingerbread Man, having students compare and telling you the differences. So here we have sand, waves, and ice cream. Here, what the students are going to do is find the differences. If you see a number there up, you see the number eight, that means that our students are going to find eight differences. So you can say the kite, and teacher can say, teacher, how do you say blah, blah, blah in English? So, oh, kite, and you can see the colors. Here we can practice prepositions of place. We can say on the left, the of picture one, picture two, or on the left, on the right, you can see a kite, but the kite is blue and green, but the kite on picture two is pink and purple. Uh, so the challenge is to find eight differences. And then you can see that if you want, you can share the, the, the answers. Playground. So there are many, many pictures. I'm sharing with you this PowerPoint so that you can create it. Example here, they are at the airport. Picture on the left doesn't have, <clears throat> sorry, on the right doesn't have the name terminal form. But on the right, on the right, okay, you can just explore it the way. You can use it with simple present, simple past, future, all tenses, all tenses that are, we are expected to teach in our classes. So this is J. Hey, okay, K, okay, my name is. I'm going to tell you how you can use this activity. With this activity, you're going to practice the alphabet, names, friends' name, the possessive nouns, we come from, no countries and we sell, we're going to practice with fruits, with animals. Okay, what is the idea? I'm gonna give you the example. I'm gonna say, Kay, my name is Catherine. My friend's name is Kelly. We come from Keystone and we sell kiwis, right? Okay, Gustavo, do me a favor, Gustavo. Let's go into do the exercise, but with letter A. Gustavo say, hey, my name is, 
even though you, your name doesn't begin with A, this is an, an example, a, a practice. Gustavo, A, my name is? Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, my name is Arturo. Yes. Uh, my friend's name? Oh, okay. My friend's name is uh, Angel, Angel. Yes. And we are going from uh, Argentina, Ar Argentina. And uh, we serve. Uh, mm, um, <laughs> Let's see. I uh, don't know. Uh, you can say apples. Serve... You can say apples. Okay. Apple. <laughs> yeah, even in the common one. But, anyways, so here, look, Gustavo is thinking now. Students continue B, C, D, E. It's going to be challenging some letters. But uh, here, you can use cell or you can change it by salt in past. So, we came from so you can use this to explore many many things letters spelling sometimes cities countries in english uh, fruits as i told you before anything so please use it i call it hey my name is kevin just to give you an example but are you going to use it with the whole old alphabet so also as a warm-up is a good idea k when l as i told you before let's describe pictures so remember the one that uh, Joel described it before, the one with the music? I do recommend, please, use a lot of pictures in your classes. Use a lot of pictures. I have an example here. When we are practicing the famous there is and there are, I don't know why, but uh, there, aren't, there aren't many lessons or many resources for there is and there are. Sometimes it's quite difficult. When I say let's describe pictures, what we're going to do is, okay, we are going to practice questions. Before that, let's have a mini lesson about questions and use colors. The question word is gonna be green, the auxiliary, etc. How many children are there in the classroom? How many dogs are there in the backyard? So here, what we are doing is, this is a picture, perfect, colorful, a lot of people, fruits, so we can practice countable, non-countable nouns. We can practice there is, there are, there was, there were, there will be, you know, the topic you are teaching. And now we can say, okay, I can have a student say, please, uh, as an example, Mauro, you're going to describe the picture in 30 seconds. Or please, I'm going to ask questions and you know, oh, how many people are there in the picture in the picnic? How many uh, pieces of watermelon? How many boys are playing? Uh, or oh, are there? Are there? Is there? Is there a dog in the picture? As you can see, we can use pictures. And where are they? How many turtles are there? How many whales? How many penguins? No, there are no penguins. So in this sense, we are practicing, students are practicing a lot of things with these pictures. Where are they? And we can compare. Now, if we want to go beyond and practice something more cultural, we can have pictures like this one. Guys, do we in Panama, in Colombia, in Turkey, in Lebanon, do we have, in Lima, Peru, do we have this kind of picnics? Maybe yes, maybe no, why not? <laughs> yes. Bed, at the bed, where are they? So this is why, this is more for kill, children, but yeah, you can practice animals. There is a raccoon, there are, there is, at the zoo, on the moon or the planet, uh, Mars, maybe. So this is the activity, let's, L, L, let's describe pictures. So this is another way that I, I encourage you to use, please use pictures a lot in your classes. Uh, letter M, with letter M, I want to use these missing objects. Missing objects is you have, what, what do you have here? Ball. Yeah, what else? Pairs of scissors, eraser, and crayon. Now, please memorize, memorize kids, children. I mean, this is my class with children. I wanna say, what is missing, guys? What is missing from the picture? What is missing? Remember? What is missing? The scissors, yes, Xenia, good, good. Exactly, so this is an example. Also here, look, I have more. Please, before that, the students are going to tell you what are the objects. Dinosaur teacher, 
soccer ball, flower, and now what is missing? I mean, even <laughs> I didn't remember. And you just go on, go on, and the students are gonna tell you what is missing. Also, guys, what we need to do is use the object in your house. Highlighter, like yellow, pink, sharpener, eraser. I have the four objects. Guys, what is missing? Oh, you know, teacher, the yellow highlighter is missing, right? So I can say, now look, each one, what is missing? Uh, sorry, what is missing? Yeah, so also you, just, you can have, some of your students do the same. You can say, okay, Juan Camilo, please uh, take four objects, show us the objects on the camera, and now you have to hide one and just show us and we're gonna tell you which one is missing, right? So you, you can also use this in your classes. Then you're gonna practice like concentration and speaking and vocabulary as well. Again, I have an article that is called TTTs for ELT material writers in which I selected some of the, if they say be consistent with the formatting. As you can see, all my PowerPoints are kind of the same format, the color, this and this and the frame. So this is my style, maybe. Uh, Vigida's style is different, Elixenia's style is different, but everyone has, I mean, his own, her own style. Personalized materials, yes. Be well informed about teaching and learning theories, yes. If, I, if I'm using Realia, it's because I already read something about Realia, why Realia is good in our classes. This is one example of how you can also be consistent with some theory about designing materials. Names. What is the meaning of this activity that is called names? Okay, names is, okay. I wanna say, Gustavo, okay. Gustavo, how do you spell your name? Gustavo, spell your name. Yeah, I can say, my name is G-U-S-T-A-B-O. Okay, Gustavo, look, here you have the letters. You have to do what the letters say. Gustavo, for G, give yourself a strong hug. No, Gustavo, yes. Gustavo, you clap your hands five times. Gustavo. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, studying. That's the most that I use, usually do, studying. Okay, Gustavo, let's, let's go into do this. Clap your hands five times. I couldn't do it because of... One, no, you can do it. One, two, three, four, and five. Clap, applaud it. It's because of it, one of my hands is my cell phone, and I, if I do that, okay. sorry, 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 yeah, yeah, okay. Yes, it's an example. Bueno, pick a balloon, T, act like your favorite animal. So, remember, this is an example, right? So, this is an example, okay. It works out when your students have a camera, and in this case, they have they are working with a PC. But think about this activity when we got we go back to school, it's not only online, no, it's just to give you an idea. And you can change the things, but it's so kind of fun because I say, oh, my name is Mauricio. I say, M, draw the vowels in the air. A, draw the numbers from one to 10 in the air. So you can change and you can just adapt it based on your students' ages. I have another example with names. Spell your name in actions. Okay, I say, uh, my name is Mauricio. M, thumbs up. A, touch your toes. U, smile. R, head bang. I, be a cat, so I have to act like a cat. So, you know, these activities are more for, for kids, for children, but I just, I'm just giving you an idea in case you want to adapt it to also to your adult students because it's fun for a warm up. In this case, you're not going to say, you can say, okay, my name is Mauricio. M, tell me three fruits. A, Tell me something, where are you from? So you can adapt it to different categories, not only for actions, but this is name uh, is perfect for, I mean, for actions as well. Now, O, in O, I have opinions. So sometimes we need to like do some activities that promote speaking, right? Speaking, remember, when we are taking standardized exams, standardized exams like TOEFL, IBT, IELTS, 
they limit the time in which we are going to speak. That is why in our classes, we need to use activities in which students have us a limit of time, time limit to speak. This is an example. Okay, I'm going to talk and I'm gonna give you some numbers. It's just an example. I'm gonna give you some numbers. I say Yvonne is number one, Lely is number two, and Neil is number three. It's an example. I say, okay, let's say number four. And Yvonne is number one. So what is Yvonne going to do? Remember Yvonne, it's, not, it's just a, 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 an example. You don't have to do it. Yvonne, you have topic number one. Please talk about computer games for 30 seconds. Yvonne is, okay, guys, I'm going to talk about computer games. Uh, I don't like computer games because for me it's boring and blah, 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 blah. So you have 30 seconds. Now, Lelis, number two, is going to talk about food for 30 seconds. Now, Rita, number three, I give you numbers. Guys, you are going to have 30 seconds to speak about that. And then what the teacher can do is write down if you made some mistakes or I want to add something. And then I can keep the conversation about schools, about this topic. But what we are doing is having students speak only for a period of time. And, but before the activity, we can help students saying, okay, guys, you are going to have 30 seconds to speak, a peak, speak about an activity, but first, spend five seconds saying, hello, my name is Danana. Let's then use 20 seconds to speak about music. And at the end, say, okay, guys, thank you so much for your attention. So this is the way students are going to This is giving opinions about different topics different topics. Also, also you have here some random debate debate picker. So in class, okay guys, please let's talk about we should all become vegetarian and then I set the time and we're gonna talk about it. So it's another way that I okay now tell me something interesting in a minute. All students, this was homework. Students already get ready for that. And I can say, okay, Rita, let's begin with you. And Rita's gonna say, oh, teacher, I'm gonna tell you something about this and this and this. But it's the way that a student maybe can be more, maybe even motivated, because when they have some specific time, they don't have like a speak and a speak and a speak about without time. And also, I can use this for children. I say, hey, show me your favorite toy. And I say, okay. And please, tell me this about the toy. Sorry, but tell me, what do you like about it? Why did you pick this toy? Who gave you this toy? How long have you had the toy? And so I can start, okay guys, my favorite toy is, toy is Woody. Woody is a toy from Toy Story. I got it last year. My mom gave it to me, something like that. I mean, it's an example, but previously students, it's not a surprise for a student. No, it's not a pop quiz. The students need to get ready for that. But uh, look, it's another example not only for virtual classes, think also about when you go home and go back to school, how students can talk about something favorite, but giving them questions. It's not like speak without having an example. No, you are the one, we are the models. We need to model, in, model and give an example. And then students are going to show their favorite toys, camera or the school. So this was an example of how uh, students or we can give our opinions in class. Now, let's see letter P. Oh, this is more advanced, but a phrase or the famous, uh, there, there is a miss in there. Okay, phrasal verbs. Professor Keith Force in 2016 in Panama Tiso, he told us, guys, the three Ps that I wanna share with you are the most difficult for him, or one of the most, some of the most difficult topics to learn in English, prepositions, present perfect and phrasal verbs. That is why we also need to go beyond wake up and get up. These are the ones we always teach, wake up, wake up and get up. But we need to go beyond, why? Because you already know how used, how phrasal verbs are used. The frequency in English are really is really high. So we need to look for ways to promote the use of phrasal verbs in class, even from low level students. Advice, don't leave everything for advanced classes. No, 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 no. When students make 
mistakes about pronunciation, we can say, oh, no, in the future, they're going to solve that problem. No, 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 no. If we have the chance, please, please try to share or help students with these kind of topics from the beginning. I'm sharing with you these phrasal verbs, phrasal verbs collection that I made. I made this collection. I, I included some booklets with phrasal verbs. I also included some websites as well as some PowerPoint presentation that I am creating. I have only five. I'm planning to, to do more. So I'm taking some of the most common phrasal verbs and grouping them into like in, in groups of example here, call. So I, I just have call back, call in, call off, call up, and I have some examples. So if, if feel free to use those phrasal verbs uh, activities uh, or, or let's say, let me see. Uh, PowerPoint. So this is the collection that I, I also am sharing with you. Question with pictures, guys. Look, I just thinking about all we will use questions, but just claim questions. What's your name? My name is Mauro. Where are you from? Are you from I am from Colombia. What about if we try to implement this kind of activity, but in which students look at the pictures and they are going to create a question for that picture? For example, number one, what time is it? Number two, what could be a question for that picture? Could be, you know, uh, what is your favorite movie? Toy Story, something like that. Yes? Uh, or for this one, how old are you? I am five years old. So in this case, in that sense, what we are doing is something that I try to work every day. Why? because you and me sometimes, we are the ones who ask questions in class. We are the ones who keep asking questions, but how often do our students practice questions? So that is why even with visuals, with pictures, maybe students are gonna get more motivated to ask questions. Now, if we are working with projects or tasks, let's gonna say task, classroom task, what about if a students create like something similar to this, with their own questions and with their own pictures. This is a perfect assessment for our students. Giving the steps or the, the instructions, students are going to create, and then they are going to share this slide with the rest of the class. I have more, I have more. Look, what is Miguel doing if we're practicing ING? What are the kids drinking? Uh, is Jeronimo mopping? You can see, he's not only uh, doing that, also, Progressive, continuous. Okay, R, rectangles, what is that? Even in virtual classes, you can do that. Guys, grab your notebooks and everybody is going to draw five rectangles. Teacher, why? No, just do it. Then you say, please always try to use, try to use a, a stopwatch or time. You're gonna say, guys, uh, for this activity, Okay, you're going to create, you are going to create, or no, no, create, no, draw, uh, draw the rectangles, and I'm gonna give you five minutes. So, because otherwise, it's a good idea that uh, you control time and assign time, like for example here, I can say, hey guys, I'm gonna give you five minutes. I'm gonna give you five minutes for this activity. So, let's start now. So, with this activity, after when students completed the rectangles, I say, please transform, create something from that rectangle. Teacher, what do you mean? This is an example. Good. L guys, look. Kids, children, I created a swimming pool from this rectangle. Oh, and also created a door. So let's see. This is my, these are my examples. For sure, your children, your students, even adults. No, it's not only for children. They can create things that, oh my goodness, I never imagined that. So you can see. But I'm not only with rectangle. I mean, in case you're working in high, in the, in the high school, in face-to-face, in -face, you can also have some handouts. Or assign as homework as well. And you can do it with circles, not rectangles, circles. And you can see an example. I, I did it long time ago. You can see how one of my students 
did a wonderful job creating a sun, sunflower, fish, pan, helicopter, eye. And then we are enhancing our students' speaking production. Why? Because I'm going to say, okay, Mauro, show us your drawings and you're going to tell us what is that. Okay, guys, I'm going to tell you what I draw, drew. A sun, a sunflower. What I'm doing is practicing vocabulary speaking and my classmates are practicing listening because they are listening to me. If we have more advanced, advanced students, you can use the word circles and look for some idioms with circles in case we want to go beyond. Okay, a scavenger hunt. A scavenger hunt is something that, uh, okay, let's see our, our let's gonna see, our challenge is to do it at home, but uh, I wanna show you, share you the, the, the idea. Okay, in a scavenger, a scavenger hunt, I can have, let's begin with this activity. I say, guys, I have this, coffee bag, and I have some objects inside. You have to guess what is that all about. Let's begin with number one. So students are gonna keep asking questions and for sure some of them are gonna be like impatient. Teacher, no, tell them, no. Teacher, uh, you have a, let's gonna say, you have like a toy. I say, yes. Uh, so teacher, you have, like a Woody, I say, no, okay, guys, I have a toy, but this is an animal. It has four legs. Oh, so they keep saying things, and I say, okay, guys, yeah, this is a horse. This is a horse. Oh, I have something that uh, is used for parties. Teacher, what is that? They can, okay, yeah, people decorate your, the parties with this. Oh, teacher, it's like a, what? I say, I say oh, it's a balloon. So this is the activity that I can do with this mystery bag. And I can have many things inside the bag. Then students can also create a story with those objects. I'm gonna say, Joel, we start, then Mauro, then Gustavo, then Yvonne. So I show you an object and you are going to tell me a sentence and then, then Gustavo continues with the next and the next and the next. And out here, Scavenger Han is saying, okay guys, we're gonna have a break. Yes, teacher. So. Please bring something blue. If you have something in, in, in your house, uh, something you can use every day. Oh, teacher, I use my highlighter every day. Something that I you that makes you happy. Okay, just play games, play with my family, something like that. Uh, something red. Oh, I have to look for something red. My stapler. Something bigger than your hand. Again, this. Something smooth, maybe the Kleenex. So, something with numbers. Oh, goodness. Uh, my book. Yes, this is my book with numbers. As you can see, it could be fun and you can change. I mean, this, uh, this is an example of categories. You can change those categories by the ones that are, you can, you know, your students and you know what maybe they have at their houses or this is a, uh, just one idea. Also, when you are in the classroom, you can do that. that. Okay, guys, please bring uh, something that uh, you can write with, the pencil, something with numbers, maybe uh, the notebook so, or book, yeah, or ruler. And also, we can, we can have a rainbow hand. Please, guys, pl bring everything, re uh, something red, something orange or could be as homework. In next class, I'm going to show my friends what I have red, what I have orange, what I have indigo, violet, and that, that is that. Yes, T. Okay, what is T? T words, remember, I, I'm not sure, but maybe you have seen this, you have seen this on, 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 on Facebook. Let's say, it's a meme. With the, with the Spider-Man and a lot of confusing, super confusing words with T. So since you know, many, many students or many of you have seen the meme, what I decided is just connect that meme with my classes. What I'm doing now is using that meme and see how can I use it in my class by creating this PowerPoint and trying to explain. Yeah, when you create these PowerPoints, not only you, the students are the ones who are going to review the words, even we, because 
those words are also confusing for, for us. So we say, thought, though, with examples, yes? Though, thought, through. We went to Medellin on our way to Cincelejo. They drove through the Oriente Tunnel here in Medellin to get Jose Maria Airport. So what I'm telling you is here, we can use memes, like the ones that students see every day, and also try to adapt it. And with this lesson, you are handling, facing these kind of challenging words that a students see every, every day. So please, when you see like, this kind of memes, think about your classes and try to use them in your lessons. And let, let me see, okay, let's see, this is with letter T. Uh, let's go on with letter. Mm. <clears throat> You're gonna have this this PowerPoint, of course. T, ah, you uncover the water, the words, uncover the words. I love this game. I love this game, and let me show you how I play it. I I, I do it with my students. Uh, okay, uncover the word is this activity. I want to give you some tips with uh, uncover the word. The word. Uh, be, when you are playing this activity, you have to take the pictures of each slide before. So take your camera and take a picture of the slides because you need to you need to see the answers. I want to tell you why. Okay. Look, the categories. This is the this is the, the board. I say. Question start. So I'm gonna play boys and girls, two groups. All the boys are gonna tell me colors beginning with those letters. So the boys begin and they say, Gustavo, tell me a color beginning with one of those letters. With B. Tell me, yeah. Black. Black, with black B, black. Black. Yes, black is not there. Go ahead, continue, you have 40 seconds, go ahead. Um so so the, 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 the word had to finish with the S. No, beginning, beginning with this Lord, the, those letters. Okay. Example. Um blue. Yeah, blue. Okay. Um mm, yeah, you say violet in the chat. Yeah, thank you. Violet. Go ahead. Brown. Orange. Orange. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Violet, orange, red, red, Violet. yes. Okay, look, that is why you need to have the picture on your cell phone or tablet because you need to know the answers. It's not... Okay, this is an example. Now, I can go on and say, category is fruit. And you go on with fruit and so on. Now, I have a category, countries. I have countries, let's begin with countries. Hey, tell me, countries. Puerto Rico. Yeah. Puerto Rico, Panama, yes, Panama is here. Puerto Rico, no. USA, no. Cuba. I have Uruguay. Okay, this is an example. Turkey. Now, the one that I want to do with you now is this. Panamanian cities, town, municipalities. Okay, tell me, everybody, Panamanian cities, towns, Colón, yes. Oakland. No. Mm. A, a city in Cocle. What is uh, the David, David. Agua Dulce. David. Agua Dulce, yes. <laughs> Cocle, what is the main city in Cocle? I guess the main, or oh, you know, the biggest, or. Penonome. Yes. The capital of Veraguas. Santiago. Santiago. Okay, yeah. Okay, this is an example of how can you involve your students in this activity and then assign points and so on. So I just giving you the, 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 the PowerPoint. It's up to you how can you adapt it and how you can use it in your classes. Okay, we are about to finish with the last letters. And this was with letter U. Uh, 
I want to show you this, please. I do recommend that you use TV ads in your classes, TV ads, Comer no, yeah, commercials. This is an example of how you can use this TV ad. Well, you only need the light when it's burning low. Only miss the sun when it starts to snow. Only know you love her when you let her go. Only know you've been high when you're feeling low. Only hate the road when you're missing home. Only know you love her when you let her go. And you let her go. Okay, so in this case, I do recommend that you look for Super Bowl, Super Bowl ads. And here, what you can do, some, some, some students can just retell what is what happened in the, in the TV ad. They can write, write down a story. And also, then let's go into reflect. Okay, guys, what do you think about the TV ad? What is the most important message? Uh, friendship. What do you think about the dog and the horse? I mean, something like that. So you can use this TV ad to do many, many things. But I remember, I love the Super Bowl, Super Bowl TV ads. Uh, what's the word? Okay, let's gonna find the word. You have this, this word, these pictures. Please, let's create the word with the first letter of each picture. This is a muffin. This is a muffin. So the first letter is gonna be M. M, right? What is number two? So this is M. Who can tell me the word? All. M, all. You know, all. How do you say needle? This is nest, right? Nest. This is, what is this? Okay, I'm gonna show you the example. Monday, why? Muffin, owl, nest, dice, apron. Yes, Alexenia, thank you. Apron and yo-yo. What about the next one? What is the next one? Juice. Juice, yes. Apron. Dress. Nest, yes. J-A-N. Nest. Yes, yes. What is this? Ovni. Oh, Ovni. O sea, UFO. Yeah, UFO. U. UFO. Yeah, exactly. UFO, yes. So, J N J A N. January. Yes, January. So, look, it's another idea that uh, you can use with your students. And remember, guys, even if your students are not starting to be teachers in the future, they can create also exercises. This could be assigned as homework, and then students are gonna share their words. Okay, this extra word quiz. Extra word quiz is this quiz that I also love it. And this is a quiz that you are going to do in your classes. As I told you, warm up. It's a perfect warm up, or you can use it at the end of the class. What is the quiz? So you have the quiz, please everybody's going to grab a piece of paper as an example and write eight numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here we have this. Okay, round number one. Number one is, category number one is a city in Panama. Two, something red. Three, a country. Four, something found in a city. Five, an animal. Six, a sport. Seven, food. Eight, something round. I'm going to spin, spin, I'm going to spin the, okay, I'm going to spin the wheel. When I stop with letter D, everybody has one minute, 
to write those categories beginning with letter D. So everybody's gonna say, oh, teacher number one, a city with D in Panama. David, right? Number two, something red, a country, Denmark, something found in a city, a dinner, something like that, found, something found in a city. So this is the activity. Darien, exactly. So students are going to round number two, for example, something blue, boy's name, a color, a school subject, an ocean. And then I spin the wheel. Somebody's going to say, teacher, stop. When somebody says stop, I stop. And we're going to use the letter Y. And remember that we are going to set the time. There are many, many categories, many, many categories that you can adapt. And so you can go here, you can go to the to the to the game, and then you can say, no, I don't want to say a city in Panama because I am in Colombia. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to say a city in Panama. I say, for example, a city in, <clears throat> in Turkey and so on. So this is so easy, so easy A to edit, edit, right? So this is an example. And <clears throat> let's see, X, okay, letter Y, letter Y. Letter Y is yes, no, yes, no. What is yes, no? I'm going to give you some sentences and the students are gonna say yes or no. Berlin is the capital of Germany. Berlin is the capital of Germany. Yes. Are gonna say yes or no, yes. Okay, uh, one, two. P is, a ver, let me see. <clears throat> P is the chemical symbol of potassium. Yes or no? Yes. Exactly, and then I have, I saw lots of mouses there. Is correct or incorrect? Is correct? No, yeah, because it's mouse, no mice, it's mice, no mouses. But I have a PowerPoint that you can use in your classes to this yes, no activity. Look, what you can do is, Bogotá is the capital of Colombia. You have 10 seconds to tell me yes or no. Bogotá is the capital of Colombia? Yes. Yes. Cheese, pitufin, cartoons. I know. No, strumpf, strumpf girl, a uh, woman as strumpf. Exactly, she's got her So we have St. Patrick's Day is on March 18. True. Yes. No, it's March 17. <laughs> yeah, but it's an example. As I want to show you, for example, our teacher is from Medellin. We can contextualize with our teachers, with our names. And here, I also have, it. you can see that it's about countries, about animals, objects, and also about classes. Juanita Orozco is a student in our CONFA class, yes or no. Tejo is the National Sport of Colombia, and so on. But I try to include also your students' names. Look, Felipe Duque, Jerry, Sofia, Palacio, Matias, Hernandez are students in class. Yes, teacher, they are students in class. As you can see, you can also contextualize the yes, no questions activity. Or students can ask questions. Are they, is there, is Colombia, is Bogota the capital of Colombia? So you can also have these students by uh, this activity by questioning. The last one, the sunny sentences were taken from here. Who, what, and where? Who, what, and where is example. The students are going to create zany, you know, crazy questions. Toy is or no? Eh? Buzz Lightyear is tiptoeing in the forest. This is a zany, zany sentence. Another zany. Santa Claus is crawling in the soccer field. It's super zany, but this is the idea of the activity. And a raccoon in past could be hoped in the beach, oh yeah. This is why they are called zany sentences. And, but I, I have a, a, an example that is about zany sentences. It's a PowerPoint that uh, you are also expected to edit and use it with your students. And this is the PowerPoint that is called uh, zany sentences. 
Let me show it right now. Here, the same ones. Here you have this. I wanna show you how can you adapt it. And, okay, you go here and you can change the names, the verbs, and the complements, that's gonna call complements. So if you wanna say, it's gonna, it's gonna, I mean, you know when you know wanna have really zany sentences, use your students' names and more like connect the verbs with them, with the places you're gonna use. So you can change it. I don't wanna say play soccer, I wanna say play baseball. It's an example. Now, when you play this, or let's gonna play or do it, you spin, look, you spin, stop, my best friend, my best friend, spin. Oh, I didn't complete that. Items, hair clothes. In the swimming pool, it's super zany sentence, but uh, that's the idea. Another one. Oh, I don't have. Miguel plays baseball at the airport. Oh, no, no. The last one. Buzz Lightyear. Read a book in the aquarium, supermarket. Anyways, at home. So that's the idea. I mean, could be fun. And the students are gonna say, you can you can practice that, guys. Does the sentence make sense? And the students go, oh, teacher, it doesn't make sense. Oh yeah, it makes sense. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> yeah, we kind of. Let me show you, we kind of finished, yes. This was the last activity with letter, with letter uh, Z. I wanna tell you that, let's call it a day. Remember, we are going to practice uh, idioms. So it's time to finish. So let's call it a day. That's all for today. And I really appreciate your being here this Saturday morning and for let us, share with you these A to Z activities that I hope you can like practice in your classes and adapt in a bit. I mean, it doesn't matter if we have kindergarten students, elementary school students, high school, you can see that we can adapt and provide students, all the students in the world, in our classes, in our countries with these kind of activities that maybe can help a little bit to get more motivated about teaching English, learning English. Joel, thank you for this opportunity.